Well, I've just paused the simulator because we are just at one minute. Uh, on the left side, we've got the distance, eight nautical miles. And on the right side, if we keep our current speed, it is the estimated time to arrival at that point. Now, um, if you see this uh, button here, it's alert switches on every time we are two minutes from the next waypoint. And now we have to prepare to the transonic acceleration. How do we do that? Well, we're going to continue our tutorial and here we've got the instructions, but I'm going to explain you first. Now, before we start the acceleration, transonic acceleration, we have to check that the auxiliary inlets are shut, which are controlled by the virtual flight engineer, so we don't have, actually have to do very much. And the secondary nozzles are less than 15 degrees. Okay, let's make the, the steps one by step. These auxiliary inlets are in a new panel we haven't accessed so far, which is control shift number four. Uh, sorry, this is shift number four, but not control shift number four and here the auxiliary inlet we see them in the shut position as suspected and once again this is controlled by the virtual flight engineer we don't have to worry about that normally now control shift number two the secondary nozzles they should be uh, less than 15 as suspected i told you that it's usually around seven degrees uh, then we've got to reheat to switch them on but we are not going to do it do this uh, right now we're going to wait for it in a moment <coughs> excuse me uh, well now things we've got to do first um, we are going to accelerate so we need to deactivate the auto throttles at the same time uh, because we are going to activate the reheat and apply full power uh, we are going to overspeed if we stay leveled so we need to pitch up the recommendation for pitching up is between 7 to 10 degrees now there are two ways of doing this this one is by the book one is following the instructions and the other is a more more practical approach i will explain you both and and we are going to do it in the the easy way so that uh, you can do this uh, at first in theory <coughs> sorry as i told you first we need to increase the pitch to around seven to eight degrees then we activate the reheat now uh, because the reheat uh, actually pushes the the aircraft forwards it's a great push uh, this would be uncomfortable for passengers so instead of activating the four reheated reheaters at once uh, they were activated in terms of two first two and then when these are stable, another two. So that makes things more complicated because remember, we need to pitch up. Uh, when pitching up, we are going to activate the reheat. So we've got a quite notice noticeable increase in speed, even if we are pitching up. And then we activate the second, um, the second reheat. Now we have to keep the aircraft at all times below the maximum operating speed, which is not very easy, by the way. So it's very common that we will trigger an alarm. I think it was Andrew in the in the forum of FS Labs who, who said that um, they would have even bets between Concord captains. And if any of them made this Calvary uh, alarm to sound, then he would have to pay the, the dinner because I say it's, it's not an easy way to do it. Now, there's a more as a second easier approach is to pitch off the, the aircraft at first then activate the reheat and then there's a button here which is called max climb max climb will keep concord at all times as close as possible to the maximum operating speed um, following the procedure we shouldn't be do, we shouldn't do that until we have actually crossed the mac one uh, the mac one speed uh, but if we activate it before crossing Mark 1, I've checked that usually most of the times it works very well and makes things much more easy for us than if we try to do all of this manually. So we are going to do all of that. Finally, one more thing. <coughs> Sorry, once again. One more thing. Um, oops, I forgot. Oh, yeah. 
we know we are reaching the, um, the Mach speed. Uh, you know that the sound barrier is because we are compressing the air in the nose of the aircraft. And then uh, before just reaching, before reaching Mach 0.1, then the pressure is at the maximum. And we can know we are just about to cross Mach 1.1 because the uh, vertical speed indicator just goes crazy. You will see that goes ups and down and loses its senses just because we are crossing the sound barrier. So let's start doing things. As I said, one minute and seven nautical miles. Uh, because I uh, this changed very likely because I was pausing the the simulator. We can still wait. Uh, wait a little bit. It's not right now. So let's let let uh, the engine stabilized. Okay, so let's disengage auto throttle, and now set the pitch hold. Now we set the full throttles. Oops, oh, sorry, not this one. Oops. And here we increase the pitch. Pitch hold. Yep. Yeah. Now we are one nautical mile. Now control F4. I'm going to pause. Uh, sorry. Uh, if you remember when we were um, departing uh, before takeoff, we selected shift F4 and we activated for reheat at the same time. In order to be able to inc uh, activate them two at a time, the two inner and the two outer, instead of shift F4, we use control F4. Now, what I'm going to do is just check because uh, uh, even after, after even after engaging after burners, I'm quite behind the maximum operating speed. So I'm going to pay a close attention if this pitch angle is too much. Uh, we are between five more or less right now, but we are going to just have a look at, at how things go. So now it's stable and now control F4 to activate the second reheat. Now we see that an increase in speed. I try to pitch, hold more or less, and now what I'm going to do is activate the max climb. We are very close to the maximum operating speed. Still quite far from the Mach 1. And as you can see, once the Mach climb is activated, uh, we are always going to keep the maximum the operating airspeed. Now the vertical speed is decreasing as we get to the Mach point 1. Once again, we should be doing this manually, but just max climb makes things easier for us. We check for reheat are on. Remember the four yellow lights. And we are just about to cross the sound barrier. Right now, have a look at the vertical speed indicator. It will go up, down and up, or up and down, I can't remember up and down I guess sorry down and up now mark 1.0 oops I forgot something now what I ha we have to do here it goes um, what we have to do now oops no not this one sorry uh, the chrono we have to activate the chrono to know how for how long reheat are on because reheat can only be active for 15 minutes. I'm going to pause now. Uh, reheat can only be activated for a maximum time of 15 minutes. If after 15 minutes we haven't reached Mach 1.7, then they are going to switch off anyway, because uh, that's the maximum operating time. Now, we've passed the sound barrier, Mach 1.0. Uh, we see that we are now at Mach 1.01, and there are several things we've got to do at this stage. First, at Mach 1.0, we have to check that the press static heaters are off. Because now the fuselage, and especially the, the front part of Concorde, is going to get very, very hot because of the kinetic heating uh, due to the impact of the air with the, with the aircraft. Then we need to deactivate this press static heater. There it goes. Now, the second thing we've got to do is if there is any 
uh, anti anti ice engine or wing anti icing we've got to switch it off because of this um, uh, the aircraft is going to hit with the with the air so we don't need them <coughs> sorry <coughs> Secondly, we've got some uh, transparent the eyes and the mist uh, to have clear visibility in the visors and we can switch all of them off once again because of the heat we are not going to need them so all of them off and then when we reach Mach 1.1 we've got to check that the secondary nozzles have been modulating if you remember they were at 7 just before the transonic acceleration uh, we need to follow them and make sure that by Mach 1.1 the secondary nozzles are going to be fully open that's with 0 degrees shift uh, control shift number 2 and if we see they are closing or opening in this case very very slowly and finally they will be at 0 degrees so for the time being that's everything we've got to check the next step, uh, the next step we need to check is Mac 1.3. Uh, so I'm going to make a pause now and we'll continue explaining what happens at Mac 1.3. See you in a moment. Mac 1.1. Uh, before I have announced, but uh, we're going to check that the secondary nozzles are now fully open, zero degrees. Sometimes it's hard to get the the values. <coughs> Now, and um, before we get to Mach 1.3, I'm just going to explain what's going to happen. Now, the problem with uh, flying at supersonic, um, and that's one of the successes of Concord. Uh, yeah, this side. One of the the keys of the success of Concord over other supersonic projects is that now, as you see, the, the this intake is fully open, and we are. Uh, entering the air is getting into the into the engines at speed of Mach 1.1 which is our current speed uh, let me check this first now what happens is that after this at the, after Mach 1.3 uh, engines are not longer able to operate correctly with such a high flow of air so one of the great uh, achievements of Concorde was electronically control these ramps over here where you can see danger do not use for access when power hydraulic power is on well these ones now when we reach Mach 1.3 they are going to start to go down air is going to smash into this these ramps they are going to go down and that movement is going to slow down the air so even if flying supersonic up to Mach um, 2.0 air is going to get into the engines uh, I've I think I remember is Mach 0.75. I believe it is the speed at which the, uh, at which the airflow was reduced. So uh, we are waiting for Mach 1.3 and we'll see that these ramps start to go down. So let's check how we, we are doing uh, right now. So aircraft right and shift, sorry, control shift 4. You see the ramps go down now. Well, they are going down for the four engines and we can see the status of the ramp position in these indicators. If they seem that they are stopped now, it seems that they are not longer working. But if you have a look, uh, it's not they are not going down, it's that they are going down more slowly. Have a look, for example, at this difference where this whiter area is. In just a couple of, of minutes or seconds, if you see this one just went down a little bit more. Yeah, little by little you see this one has just gone down so they are still going down little by little until a position oh, I can't remember my head 25 or 30 I believe is the the lowest anyway at a mark 1.3 the only thing we've got to check is this that the ramps are going down so we can go back to the cockpit and now uh, next level <coughs> sorry our next uh, point where we have to pay attention is Mac 1.7, uh, because at Mac 1 at Mac sorry 1.7 uh, now we heat are not longer needed, and obviously that means a greatly decrease in the fuel consumption consumption, and that was one of the also of the great achievements of Concorde being able to fly supersonic without the need of the reheating reheats on uh, you can see that when we 
click on the max climb before the supersonic climb sometimes um, it's not perfect uh, it doesn't get to the maximum speed perfectly but over the time e eventually when we get to Mach 2.0 you will see that the, um, we are actually flying at the maximum operating speed so uh, that's why it's not the best way to do it but um, very likely it's the easiest so at Mach 1.7 the virtual flight engineer is going to deactivate the reheat so we don't have to actually do anything but we only have to pay attention and make sure that the virtual flight engineer is going to do it if we have a, a look at the elapsed time uh, since we engage the reheat uh, it's almost seven and a half minutes uh, and as I said the maximum time would be 15 minutes so if 15 minutes pass uh, even if we are not at Mach 1.7 reheat will go off now one very important aspect uh, that we should pay a close attention <coughs> sorry once again I told you my voice is not good but I want to finish this tutorial as soon as possible so even if not in the best of conditions I will go on I hope you'll excuse me now have a look because we are very close now to Mach 1.7 and then uh, at the same time that we engage them two at a time now they are going to be disengaged two at a time one two inner and the two outer there we go now we can now stop if we want the, um, the chrono because now we no longer need it sometimes it's good to leave it on just to know uh, how long it takes to get to Mach 2.0 so well, you can leave it on one of the key aspects is the outer temperature wow I saw minus 15 that's that's very strange that's very, very very uncommon that's why we are climbing so fast now with um, if you don't in case you don't know the I don't know how to pronounce this in English actually ISA I, I, ISA ISA I don't know Spanish would be ISA well this is the standard atmosphere and the standard atmosphere assumes a temperature of 15 degrees at sea level and minus 50 sec 56 uh, above I think it's flight level 370 or so flight level 370 350 I don't know some, somewhere over that altitude is where you get the um, uh, the minus 57 degrees and then even if you climb higher then there's uh, very little or no change at all in that temperature so the reference speed is minus 56 with colder temperature such as in this case um, with colder temperatures we are going to get a, a better uh, performance we are going to climb faster and we are going to reach the we are going to reach the speed of sound uh, sorry the the Mach 2.0 uh, quicker so this is good performance for climbing on the other hand when we are going to descend if the air is so dense uh, we are going to get worse rates of descent so we need to descend earlier if we've got um, a temperature below the standard uh, or we can stay supersonic for longer if the temperature is uh, higher than than the standard is really it's pretty unusual to see such a low such a low standard temperature and this is also important because here we've got the maximum uh, operating temperature of 127 um, I can't remember what's the difference between the standard uh, I mean if we are five or six or seven degrees above the standard temperature we will reach at the maximum operating temperature and then Concord uh, needs to reduce uh, power to reduce speed and avoid overheating the, the aircraft so we can see that the total temperature uh, which means the outside temperature but <coughs> we take into account the kinetic uh, increase in temperature and this is a, a total value of 62 and uh, we should have minus 56 if we had a standard atmosphere but because we are almost at minus 17 uh, we are the outside temperature is minus 73 so there's actually not much more things to do except one now we need to set our final altitude 
we need to set it to 60,000 feet, which is the maximum operating altitude of Concorde. So even if we could climb higher, this has to be our final destination. Uh, I remind you that in order to activate this limitation, we need to activate the altitude acquire. And I also remember, because I said this before, that when flying supersonic, we do not activate the two outer throttles, but just one. So now everything is ready, and then when we reach not 16,000 no, um, 16, feet, but 50,000 feet, I'll talk about it later, and then the outer throttle is going to engage. So we have nothing to do but wait until the next waypoint. If you remember, I selected the waypoint 7 because this is where we have to change cards, but we still have got to uh, 270 miles to go so plenty of time will certainly will be reaching Mach 2.0 before that point so I uh, pause here continue in some minutes we are now at Mach <coughs> sorry Mach 198 we are very close to Mach 2.0 this usually happens around more or less at 50,000 feet the flight engineer is go uh, has recently changed the settings, the flight rate settings for, from the climb settings to the cruise setting. Um, this is selected here in this panel, uh, the engine rating mode. But uh, once again, this is something we don't have to worry about because the flight engineer does. Now, it's very important that at this step we make sure that there is, well, first the altitude of the choir is selected and then auto throttle 1 is selected and auto throttle 1 because we are selected autopilot 1. Now, exactly at Mach 2.0, then the Mach hold uh, mode is going to activate, also the Max cruise is going to activate here, and we'll see an increase in the N2 uh, up to 107%. Now this is going to this is 107 uh, percent is going to last for exactly 100 seconds, and during those 100 seconds the Mach hold is going to be on. Now because we are <coughs> sorry because the engine the engine settings is higher than normal, we are going to not only reach Mach 2.0, but also we are going to get Mach 2.0 sometimes. 0.1 and sometimes we could even see Mach point um, 0.2 and after that then after those those 100 seconds then the engine rating go, goes back to 100 at about 105 percent and that is the uh, cruise power we're going to keep for the rest of the flight so any moment now we should see the Mach hold light on and also the Mach the Max cruise light on at this altitude, sometimes the rate of climb is really, really slow, as you can see here. So sometimes it just needs some time. Also, we are still have a very, very low outer temperature, uh, a deviation of 20 degrees over the standard, which is pretty unusual. It's uh, January the 30th now, so we are in the middle of the winter, but even though it's very low temperatures, uh, almost. And the moment we hit Mach 2.0, you'll see these two lights go on, and then the N2 increase to 107%. It's going to hit any moment now. Come on. It's so so slow rate of climb. There it goes. You see, Mach hold, Mach cruise, and now the N2. You see, it's rising. So we should be getting at least, usually, at least Mach 2.01. Sometimes even to Mach 0 0.02. Uh, Not today, it seems. We are already almost at 107 percent. Well, uh, actually, there isn't much more to do now. Uh, just after those 100 seconds, light will go off, and then, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, the N the N2 will go back to the normal cruise. Now, um, I think I've talked about this 
somewhere. I can't remember. The max climb a max crew mode, these two are going to stay on. The only one that is going to go off is this one. Uh, the max, cli max climb and max crew combined is a special Concord uh, navigate or cruise mode that no other aircraft uh, has, which is that uh, mm, Concord is going to head for keeping the speed of Mach 2.0. Uh, so it's going to sometimes it's going to climb very slow as we are burning fuel and we are getting lighter Concorde is going to uh, climb little by little higher and higher so it's going to reduce the, the fuel flow uh, but sometimes if temperature for instance go up or the wind changes or whatever other reasons we could even see Concorde go down usually not very much but sometimes Concord, you see, Mach hole is now gone, so 100 seconds have elapsed, elapsed. Now we reduce the throttles, and usually most of the time we'll just stay with Mach 2.01 for the rest of the flight. So as I said, this Max Climb and Max Cruise, cruise was a very special uh, mode because it's not like a traditional step climb. We don't need to wait to burn fuel to go higher. We do it at the same time. We burn f burn fuel and go up at the same time, up to the maximum of 60,000 feet. It's pretty uncommon to reach this altitude unless we are flying light and also we've got a low external temperature. Today, even if the uh, external temperature is very low, we have 100 passengers on board, we are fully loaded, so even with favorable, fa favorable external weather conditions, I don't really think, maybe maybe 58 or to 59,000 feet, but I don't really believe we are going to get to the 6,000. Right, we are now two minutes to reach enough, you have seen the alert goes on, so it's a visual warning that we are just two minutes of reaching waypoint seven. What happens at waypoint seven, if you remember, this is in our root sheet. And we, do, and we see here that between point waypoints seven and eight, we need to load segment 11 in our navigation. So we are going to get our systems ready. And this one. Ah, by the way, one thing. <coughs> <coughs> I'm really sorry. Uh, have a look now that we are 24 nautical miles from waypoint 7. You see that Concord will load the waypoint, the next segment, before, quite before getting to 1 nautical mile. The reason is that at supersonic speed, the bank angle of Concord is very, very limited. So um, Concord, the computer, anticipates, uh, depending on how sharp is the corner, uh, will start the turnings sometimes even 20 or 20 something miles before getting to the actual waypoint. If you have seen now between 14 and 15 nautical miles the turn starts. We know that we are over our previous waypoint. We have two forms of knowing this. One, remember that I've got on the right INS, I have still have got in the manual setting waypoint number seven, so I know I'm still nine nautical miles for waypoint number seven. At the same time, the horizontal indicator, when the when it is completely aligned, that means that we've already recovered the our expected track, our expected uh, path. Well, I'm not going to wait very much. Now, what I do is uh, next waypoint is between four. Next segment load is between waypoint four and five. But I'm not actually, usually, I would uh, include waypoint number four. But I'm not going to do it this time for another reason. I'm going to just, just explain. So first, we are going to make sure that the remote is active in all three. Otherwise, remember that only one INS would load the next road. We click on, on the plus sign and then we use the mouse wheel and scroll down. So we get... Uh, the sheet, the the route 11. We load it, and once it's finished, we're ready to go. All right. Now, um, 
I think I'm going to make another pause here. We are already at cruise level, flight level uh, Mach 2.0, at flight level almost 510 climbing. So I'm going to talk about now about some of the DMA updating, but in the next video. I'm going to finish this one here, so we'll see you in the next video.